I've been doing quite a few videos uh, and I haven't got them quite put together yet because I'm trying a new system out for a microphone so that means I don't have to stand so close to the camera like I did before I can get uh, get a distance away and also it should be a bit more clearer for editing because like I say I'm using two cameras I've got one there and I've got one here so we'll be able to get a good view of what we're actually doing but yesterday I was messing about doing a steering box now I didn't really want to do another video on replacing the seals because this this particular steering box down here if we can see it yep uh, it wasn't particularly a problematic it was it turned nice and the seals weren't too bad but I thought I'll replace them anyway because I've sold this one so uh, yeah, I want it to be right so I simply took off this little rubber cover here and if you can see there so I took that rubber cover off well actually it was almost missing undid the circlip and then drilled two little holes I've done this before drilled two little holes in the metal plate the rubberized metal plate pull it out same two screws into the rubber seal and pull it out and that's it and you're out now I want to show you a little tool that I use to check the shaft because sometimes it's kind of difficult to see inside if there's a groove God, I forgot to pick it up and this is it these these are little tools for fitting o-rings and they were on special like four of them for about I don't know, two dollars they were pretty cheap Titan so uh, with this not, not being a scratchy thing because it's got quite a wide it's got a quite a wide head on there you can poke it inside here and feel if there's any scratches on the shaft it'll really exaggerate if there's any scratches if there's a if there's a mark in it you might be wasting your time putting a seal in it fortunately this was a good one all right so I've explained why I took it out and how I took it out and found out there was no scratches so then with some uh, electrical tape I put a cover of tape around these splines so that the seal doesn't catch and tear that's most important okay where I'm bringing you to is a little set now this set here you can buy a set just for the bottom seal this is made by Schudenberg uh, STC 2848G uh, and it has everything you need there's the little rubberized seal there's the hydraulic seal circlip and dust cover simples now to fit the seal is kind of a bit tricky because I got an email from a chap the other day who said he had great difficulty in fitting the seal well let's see about that see what we can do about that because I got hold of a piece of plastic water pipe connector this was a, a reducer I think it was but the sizes were absolutely fantastic for what we wanted so I cut it down the inside diameter of this is do it in millimeters it's 32.8 so you can call it 33 millimeters the outside is 40 or around 40 millimeters so bear that in mind right so with this when you wanted to fit the rubber seal I don't think I've got a spare rubber seal here just let me quickly have a look I don't think I've got one because I used them all up no I haven't got a seal out so you'll have to bear with me so what I did was with this with this seal off here with this rubber seal off I, I slipped over the blue seal over the shaft and with this I pushed it like this then got hold of a new lock washer and a nut and a nut that goes on there and then using a tool like this like a plastic spatula I pushed the seal in and when it was sort of going in turn the turn the nut a little bit keep pushing it in and you'll find yes the lip might push out but you you're not struggling against one side or the other this is keeping tension on the seal whilst you push your seal in and it's brilliant 
Then, once, you, once you're happy the seal's in, just keep taking You only have to take it down by hand. You, if you're using a spanner on it, well, you're doing it wrong. But just keep progressively tightening it. And then you'll find out this. Oh, I should have said what the length was, shouldn't I? Wait a minute. It's approximately 45 millimetres long. So we're going to keep that in the armoury from now on, in the box. Worked out better than a piece of tube I used last time. Again, lubricate the seal, make sure the shaft's good, tape, put it on, great. Sir clip, um, um, sorry, the metal rubberized seal here, sir clip, dust cover, job done. Now, I tested this to 1,200 pounds on my uh, bench, never leaked. So we've got a good seal there, I can sort of guarantee that. However, I thought while I was at it being a clever bugger, I'll change the seal in here. This is a 1995 uh, steering box. And I got from Britpart a kit. Now, why did I buy it from Britpart? Well, because it's a country of origin, was from the UK, or so it says. But, although you get lots of seals, uh, let's see if I can get that organised again. So you get two circlips uh, and several seals. You get a regular type of O-ring type of thing here, um, a seal here and a seal there. Now this rubber seal here, this little rubbery chap, I think I might have one of those out, kicking it out somewhere. Ah, here. That little rubbery type chap actually goes from the inside. Bad idea, because that means stripping the whole bloody thing down. But the seal that comes with the kit that's like a... Uh, a proper or a proper oil seal look what happens it slips over the shaft and won't tighten down it, it, it won't go on the shaft the shafts are actually smaller if we just quickly uh, check the shaft John shaft it's a uh, 20.37 millimeters and the o-ring is 21.43 no, not the o-ring but the oil says 21.43 we can prove this again by getting hold of one of these metal covers here because this they used to be fitted with this type of dust shield but look it just drops on too big oh my what we're we gonna do oh mr porter what shall i do what i did i bought a lot of these i bought a bag full of them somewhere here no nope, not them i bought a bag of them they're actually, uh, what does it say on the outside of this seal? Has it got a part number? No. I went down to my local shop and got them. Oh, it has got a part number. Let me go and get my magnifying glass and I'll come back. Right, back again. It, there's, it's actually not a part number. It says TC2032. So I expect the 32 is the outside diameter correct and the inside diameter is 18 so that's for a 20 millimeter shaft hey 20.5 so that's correct and this if you want the thickness of it you know just out of shits and giggles it's uh six and a half millimeters these are a nice snug fit on that shaft and i've tested these and it won't leak now I'm not sure if you're familiar with the pipe work on this one, but this this piece of uh, hose coming out of here, this is your high pressure hose, but this is your f this is your return hose uh, back to your back to your reservoir. So there's no pressure really on this seal. There shouldn't be any pressure on the seal. All right, but they do wear out eventually. But again, check with your little tool down there. Make sure the shaft is all right. You know, make sure there's no grooves. And then you can use that type of seal. Why they don't fit them in the box, I do not know. In the kit, I do not know. Are they in the... Well, here's a good question. Are they in the big kit? Now, this is a full rebuild kit. And the answer is no. It's the same size seal. So this must... These kits here, which is STC 2847G, must be for an older version of this steering box. 
So there you go, eh? What a mystery. Who, who would have thought it? Um... So this gear, this steering box is good to go. I, I'm so pleased I made a machine for testing them. Because uh, there's nothing worse than assembling the steering box, you know, messing about with it, and then the bloody thing leaks. At least whilst it's on the machine, which, which, is, which is now a stand for uh, Series 3 gearbox parts, um, you can test them before you fit them. And then you know they're not going to leak. You know, so... But strange things do happen. I did do one once on a TD5 and it went, went for a week or so and then it leaked again out the bottom. So what that problem was, I don't know. It's been rebuilt yet again. Put it up to £1,200. No problem at all. So I don't know what the problem with that one was. Uh, it, when I say leaked, it was a tiny, it was a wet. It wasn't pouring out, it was just a bit wet. So this, gets, this steering box is good to go. Unfortunately, like I say, there isn't no seal on the input shaft, no, no dust cover, but that's it. Can you replace, here's a good question, if it's leaking out the input, can you replace it in situ? Yes, if you're clever. If you can get the old one out by doing some very fine drilling on the side and pull the seal out, or even get some sort of a fancy hook under there and, you know, like put it, put a hook type of thing and pull the seal out, you could do it in situ. But be warned if you're drilling it. You've got to be really accurate drilling the hole. The last thing you want to do is be cockeyed and go through the side wall where the seal sits here because if you drill through that bit, it can be a problem. I did have a box like that once that somebody had actually uh, hit on the side. But fortunately, with a bit of JB Weld, you can, you know, the, the two-pack epoxy, you can build it up smooth it down and then reseal it again it, it is salvageable and it's not dangerous because again it's low pressure it's just annoying bloody leaks so there you go now oh i forgot i might as well tell you this because some of you haven't been around around here for a long time you newbies once upon a time many years ago i had a seal leaking i had the steering box leaking out of here and it was an exchange one from Britpart, and um I don't know if you can see quite clearly here. There's an outer ring. So there's the outer piece. There's a pin. No, you can't see, can you? Let's do a little zoom. There. You can see the pin here. And this is the outer piece. Now, if I tip it up this way, you can see there's two concentric rings. Just give me two seconds. I'll just get a wire brush and clean that up. Right, back again. You can probably see here, there's a shaft inside that outer ring. And if you can get this out, so you need to take the whole spindle out. There is a square section O-ring inside here, because this is your shuttle valve. This is allowed to move a little bit, all right? This, this moves, but there's a seal between these two shafts. Now, if this is leaking, the thing is you're supposed to buy the whole shuttle valve assembly. You cannot buy it. JP and I managed to get this apart, and it's not easy. So if it's leaking from there, I wouldn't... I mean, we had no choice to uh, other than to knock the pin out. But we had to use a hydraulic press to press it out. It's a very tight fit. But just be warned, if you put a new seal in and it's still leaking, just check here. The only, re the only way we found that was leaking was by taking the steering shaft off and having all the pipes going and start the engine and watch it leak. And it was, like I say, it was coming out of there. Very, very rare. I've only seen it once in all my life leaking out of there, but it just shows it does happen. All right? So that's it. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you when we see you. Ta-da!